Kia ora. So this video is about how to calculate cumulative binomial probabilities. In the New Zealand curriculum using NCA, this is part of the probability distribution standard. And if we look here, we can see that it is one of the distributions we need to be able to handle. Um, at achieve level, we need to be able to identify the conditions needed to use binomial distribution, use it to estimate probabilities of a certain number of successful outcomes out of a fixed number of trials, and at merit level, we need to be able to justify why we've chosen to use binomial to model a given variable, name the properties of the binomial distribution in context, and discuss whether or not they're satisfied or not. So this video is going to be focused at achieve level, and it's looking at how to calculate binomial probabilities of more than one x value. The example we're using is a Russian multi-choice test, where you had 10 questions, all in Russian, and if you don't speak Russian, you were guessing. Now, each question had four possible answers, one of which was correct. You had to select randomly A, B, C, or D, and so you had a one in four chance of fluking it and getting each question right. And a 3 and 4 chance, or 0.75, of getting each question wrong. So the binomial distribution would be used to look at the probability of getting a certain number of questions correct out of 10. So, the variable x equals the number of questions you got right out of the 10 x is known to have a binomial distribution. And the distribution in theory is something like this, because most of us don't speak Russian, so most of us sucked at that test. So the average or the expected number correct was about 2 or 3 out of 10. So that's the binomial distribution. So we're going to look at the question of what's the probability of getting up to 2 correct, so 2 or less questions correct. So, in terms of our mathematical notation, we write that as calculate P brackets X less than or equal to 2. So, the probability that the number correct is less than or equal to 2. There are 10 trials, that's the questions, and the P is the probability of getting each question right by chance, which is 0.25, 1 and 4. So, there's three ways we can do this. First way is using the formula, second way is using the tables, which you get on your formula sheet, and the third way which is by far the easiest, is the graphics calculator. So we'll start with the formula. So I'm assuming by now that you have been introduced to binomial distribution and you've seen the formula and you understand how it works. If not, you need to figure that out first or see your teacher. So we could do it one by one. The probability x equals 0 is going to be 10 combination 0 times the probability of success, so 0.25 to the power of 0 times the probability of failure, which is 1 minus 0.25 or 0.75 to the power of 10. And if you grab your calculator and chuck that into your calculator, you should get 0 0.05631. Then we need to work out the probability that x equals 1, so we get exactly 1 correct out of 10. So substituting 1 into that formula, and we get that answer. And then we work out the same for the probability of getting two questions correct. So we get these three numbers here. Then what we do, if we want to know the probability of getting up to two correct, then we need to add those three probabilities together, don't we? So when we add them together, we get 0.52559, or about 53%. So about 53% of the time, you get two or less correct out of 10, if you don't speak Russian. Now, that's quite a long way to do it. A much faster way is to use the tables which you get on your formula sheet. So we go to our formula sheet and we look up the binomial distribution table. And on the left, we see the heading N. So what's N again? N is the number of trials. And so we did 10 questions, so we're going to go to 10. Then we look at the probability of success, getting each question right, and that's 0.25. And then we're interested in the probability of getting up to 2 correct. So that means the probability of x being 0, 1, 2. And there they are. And we just add those numbers together. And notice 
those numbers circled in red are the same as these numbers here, except they're rounded. And so we get a similar answer. Okay, now the third and final way, which is by far the easiest and the quickest, is to use your graphics calculator. And um, this is a wee diagram here of how to use it, uh, which you can copy. I'm going to show you as well. So we go to menu, we go stat, distribution, and then we go binomial. Now you've got two options there. You've got BPD on the left and BCD on the right. The PD stands for probability distribution. The CD stands for cumulative distribution. But for the, in terms of as far as you're concerned, getting the questions right, think of P as particular. We use BPD when we're after the probability of a particular X value, like the probability of getting exactly two correct. We use BCD when we're after cumulative values, which means X or less. So if we want to know the probability of getting two or less correct, then we use CD on the right there, and we type in 2. Okay, so let's actually do it on the graphics calculator. Okay, so we go menu, and then we go stat, and we go distribution, which is F5, and binomial, so that's F5 again. BCD, because we want... Cumulative, we want um, the probability of getting up to two correct. And the data is as a list, we want to change that to a variable. So the first thing we do is we change list of variables. So variables over F2, so F2. Right, now we want the probability of getting up to two correct. So you put in the maximum value in that range, which is two. The number of trials. We had 10 questions. The probability of success in each individual trial is 0.25 because there's a 1 in 4 chance of getting each question right. Execute. And you see we get the same answer, 0.52559, so 0.5256. Same answer as we got using our tables and also our formula. All right, now, because our calculator does up to a certain value, so it does X or less, we need to think about how that would work in a question like this. So this is a different example. Here there's a game of cards, and we're looking at if you randomly draw from a deck of 52 cards, what's the probability that you get a heart? So the winner is the person that randomly draws the most hearts out of five goes. So each time you shuffle the cards, you pull one out, Observe whether it's a heart or not. Put it back, reshuffle. Pull it, pull out a card. Observe whether it's a heart or not. Put it back, reshuffle. So a quarter of the playing cards have hearts on them. So the chance, of, the probability of successfully getting a heart each time is one in four, or 0.25. N equals five because we're drawing five cards, and we want to know the probability of these three things. So question A is what's the probability of getting less than three hearts? A really good way to approach it is to actually start by writing out the possible number of successful outcomes, say X. So X could be, we could get potentially no heart. So we could draw five cards with a replacement and none of them are hearts. Or we could get one heart, four not, or get two hearts, three hearts, four hearts, five hearts. So the next thing we do is we circle the part that we want. So in this question, it was less than three hearts is what we're after. So the probability of X being less than 3, so we, we circle less than 3. Then we remember that our graphics calculator doesn't do less than, it only does X or less. So X or less, so the, that means that we have to circle the highest value in that interval. The highest value in that interval is actually 2, so that means that the probability that x is less than 3 is the same as the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. And so it's the 2 that we're going to be typing into our graphics calculator. And we go distribution, binomial, bcd, and we want less than or equal to 2 out of 5 trials. And the answer is 
Okay, the next situation, this one here, is question B. Now, B is what's the probability that we get at least three halves. So X is greater than or equal to three. So this time, same thing, except I want greater than or equal to three. So I'm going to circle everything, three or more. Now, our calculator doesn't do greater than or equal to. What does our calculator do? It does X or less. So we, what's the max, how are we going to actually work this out? Let's have a look. Well, we're going to have to do it in two steps. The first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the probability that we don't want, which is everything less than three. So on our calculator, this is what we don't want. It's going to be this. It's going to be the probability of X is greater than or equal to three. It's going to be one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to two. So the yellow bit there. So one minus, and we need to work out what that is. So less than or equal to two. And remember it's out of five. So five trials and less than or equal to two, we've already worked out, haven't we? So it's going to be one minus that. One minus 0.89648, we'll go. And we get go from here. And we get 0 0.1035 to 4 SF. All right, next situation. So this one is question C. What's the probability that we get between two and four hearts inclusive? So what do you think inclusive means? Well, it means including the two and the four. So let's draw it. So between two and four inclusive means we write it like this. We go the lower limit, which is two, and we write X, and we write the upper limit, which is four. Then we figure out which sign it's going to be. So we want X to be greater than or equal to two, but less than or equal to four. The two signs should always be pointing the same way. The bigger end of the sign should be facing towards the bigger value. So that's the bigger end. We want X to be bigger than or equal to two. So then we think, okay, what are we circling? Well, we're circling two through to four. So there's a few ways we could do this. What would be one way that we could work this out quickly on a on a graphics calculator. I want you to actually pause the video and think about the ways we can work this out. So we've got our tables, our formula, our graphics calculator. Which would be the easiest way? Well, let's try it using the tables first. So if we go to our tables, we want 2 through to 4. So here we are. So we want, we're drawing 5 cards, so we want n equals n equals 5, and the probability of getting between 2 and 4 inclusive successful outcomes, so that's 2 through to 4, and <clears throat> the probability of getting a heart on each individual trial is going to be a quarter, so 0.25, and so if we go down from there and across, and like so, so we're just adding up those three numbers on our graphics calculator or any calculator. So 0.2637 plus 0.0879 plus 0.0146 and we get that answer. So 0 0.3662. We could have done it on our graphics calculator. That would have involved, well, one way of doing it <coughs> would be to work out everything less than or equal to 4 and then subtract what we don't want, which is everything less than or equal to 1. So we could do it that way as well and see if we get the same answer. So probability 
x is between 2 and 4 inclusive would be probability the blue bit. So probability x is less than or equal to 4 minus the green bit, which is the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. So we work them out in our graphics calculator. So starting with less than or equal to 4. So remember we're going to go menu, stat, distribution, binomial, B, C, D, because it's cumulative. So it's 4 or less. So we're going to go 4. And out of 5 trials, and probability of success in each trial is still 0.25. And we get that number there. So it's almost 100%. So 0.9990 for SF, and then minus the probability x is less than or equal to 1, so I just go back, x, x it takes me back a screen, and all I'm doing is I'm changing that 4 to a 1, like so, and I get 0 0.6328, 0.6328.1, and let's see if we get the same answer as we got using the tables. So 0.999 minus 0. 63281 and yeah we do 0 0.36619 that's so pretty much the same thing hey so which way was easier and quicker well it actually probably depends on you which way do you find easier and quicker um, important to be able to know that the tables are sometimes easier than the calculator and sometimes but other times the calculator is easier than the tables so it doesn't matter um, in terms of the rounding side of things. In fact, if you've used your graphics calculator, always write down that you've used your graphics calculator and you can just write GC, which could stand for quite a lot of different things, but here it stands for graphics calculator and the examiner knows that. Or if you've used your tables, write tables beside it because um, where there's differences in the answer due to rounding, the, the person marking your exam will have both answers in front of them. And so you just have to make sure you've said either tables or graphics calculator. You need to practice some of these, so whichever workbook you're using, um, the more of these you practice, the easier it gets. And the main thing is getting used to the wording and getting used to um, how the wording relates to the greater than less than signs. All the best.